All right, guys, I am here at Harley Davidson Demo Days, and I think I rode almost every single bike in the whole line. <laughs> I think I'm down to my last two. Whew. Kind of getting worn out. We'll take a look at this bike. This is a Road Glide Limited. Whoo, take a look at that. Uh, I told the guy, I was like, hey, he got a little bit of damage on the side. <laughs> I'm not responsible for the damage. He's like, oh, I know there's damage. But look at how plush that looks. Super plush. All right, should we take it out for a ride? And you know, it's a road glide because the road glide, the fairing doesn't turn with the handlebars. Check that out. So with a street glide, the street glide actually has the fairing attached to the handlebars and it actually moves with the handlebars. I always find it interesting that there's these little, like blank little uh, buttons. I don't know if they could put buttons there, like optional buttons, or if it's just decoration, which is kind of interesting. All right, to turn it on, there's the ignition. Oh, you have to turn it on here. Some of them have this switch in the middle, some of them doesn't, and of course, you have the radio. <laughs> All right, so I'm, fi I'm, fi I'm figuring out that the radio, when you first jump on it, the button is right here. Uh, and you just press this button down to turn the volume down on the radio. All right, and then make sure it's in neutral. It's not in neutral. I can feel it. Uh, neutral, then you hit this, the ignition. All right, got a little bit of vibration. Uh, that's pretty good vibration, actually. I'm finding some of these bikes vibrate almost as much as a Dyna. <laughs> it's almost like a rubber-mounted engine, which is interesting. And some of them are really smooth. So this one actually has the uh, 114 in it. Price on this, Prospect Gold with Vivid Black is $33,194. $33,000. It's one of the more expensive ones. Of course, you have all the, the bags in the back. Got a loud clunk from putting it into gear. All right, we got floorboards. My feet ride up quite a bit on the floorboards, actually. Not too bad. All right, uh, let's see. Hopefully I won't run into this guy. <laughs> All right, I think he's coming back. I don't think he's going out. All right, here we go. All right, brakes. Uh, <laughs> the brakes kind of suck. I'd say on these, of course it's a bigger bike, so. Yeah, and then pulling up to stop sign, not too bad. <laughs> with that big fairing, you have to really be careful with the big fairings like that. Because uh, it, they seem to be top heavy, especially if you have the touring pack on the back with the luggage that kind of sits up high. That in addition to this big fairing, a lot of times these bikes can be really top heavy. And you, when you pull up to a stop, you definitely want to be straight up and down. And they say if you go too far, then uh, it starts falling and you can't stop it. It just goes down. Uh, sometimes with these big bikes, I've seen where they need three people to pick them up, which is crazy. But this is uh, very comfortable. The seat is super comfortable on this. <laughs> it's like a pillow. I'd say it's probably the most comfortable seat so far. And this is the 114, so there's no uh, modes. It's a little bit slower because uh, it's a bigger bike. 
you know, the, the fat boy and the, the street bob have the 114, they seem way faster just because they have a lot less mass. You're pulling a smaller bike with the same engine, which is pretty interesting. So it's not really about the engine, it's about the weight per horsepower ratio, really. That's what it comes down to. This one is super plush. <laughs> Super plush. That's what you get for thirty-three thousand. Uh, probably one of the smoothest as far as road vibration. Almost no road vibration, and the windshield is up to where it should be for a big guy like me. Like I'm six foot four, and that's like perfect. There's like no uh, no wind noise at all. Zero wind noise. This is the best wind deflection out of all the bikes that I've been on today and yesterday. So I think I only have one more bike to go after this and I'm done with all 18 bikes, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. But it's, yeah, the wind deflection is pretty incredible. Of course, uh, even my legs are completely out of the wind. Uh, if I tuck my legs into the, by the gas tank, there is zero wind like on my whole body, which is pros and cons, I guess. <laughs> on a hot day like today, wearing this heavy leather, uh, it is, uh, 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 the wind is kind of welcome, but yesterday I got caught in some hail and some really heavy rain. And boy, I was actually on the Nightster when that happened. No deflection at all. <laughs> I was like in the middle of the middle of the storm exposed on this crazy bike with 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 no wind deflection. So this would definitely hold up to a storm a lot better. Uh, the one thing on this is it seems like my feet maybe are a little bit too high on these floorboards just because I'm six foot four. I don't know if you can, uh, if there's a way to actually like put some, there's not really a crash bar where you can put foot pegs on the crash bar, but that's almost what you need is something to go on a little bit further. But yeah, this is super plush. It's got a good sound to it. It doesn't really have that much power <laughs> compared to the other bikes. Because it's a really big bike with just the uh, 114. I don't know if you can get this in the 121. The 121s are so powerful. You almost lift up the, f the front tire on some of those. It's kind of crazy. So this is where you got to kind of be careful. Front brakes are great. Feels like they upgraded the front brakes. Back brakes seem like they're standard Harley brakes. pretty loud but it doesn't really roar it's just loud it's, it doesn't really have that choppiness to the exhaust note it's kind of a different exhaust I, I think I like it I do think I like it I like it better than most I'd say it's pretty nice I was on another road glide today. It seems like all the road glides are just super plush, super nice. Some of them have better seats. I'd say this one has the, the a better seat. Uh, maybe a, I think they upgraded the suspension on this one. It seems a lot better than, than some of them. I'd say this is probably the best suspension out of anything that I've been on. Best suspension, best wind deflection. Best seat, uh, maybe not the best ergonomics for someone 6'4", just right off the showroom floor. I feel like the seat could go back and my feet could go down, maybe forward and down. But if you weren't so tall, this would be awesome. Seems like it's pretty nimble on the road, not too bad. has an interesting dash setup that goes around kind of in a circle like 
the other road lines. I think it's kind of interesting that in some of them you have the, the digital stuff on the top and some of them you have it on the bottom to where you have the, the analog dials up on the top. I think it's actually better if you have, especially the analog speed limit, which I really like, this is the dial, have that up on the top of the dash so you don't have to look down so far to see how far you're going. Like on the fat boy, you have to look way down on the tank <laughs> to see how fast you're going. And it's kind of a distraction because you take your your eyes off the road just for a, a split second, which almost seems like it's too long taking your eyes off the road. But this isn't too bad. You don't have to really take your eyes too much off the road to look at this. But I would prefer it up a little bit higher. So the last road glide I was on, it didn't have the windscreen that was that tall. And I was getting significant buffeting. Zero buffeting on this motorcycle. None at all. Oh, let's see. Let's all right, so I want to turn around up here. All right, the other thing, I want to show you something right up here. Let's pull up right here. So on some of these bikes, I've had a problem where you turn the steering wheel, or the handlebars, <laughs> it's not really a steering wheel, and the, it actually hits my leg to where I almost have to spread eagle around a, a corner which is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> this one I have clearance all the way around, so I should have checked that before I took off, actually. Because that could get in the way going around the corner. Ooh, this one. Seems like it's uh, it's harder to turn. <laughs> it's harder to turn around. It must have like some resistance. Wow. That's interesting. It's like a different... Uh, different turning dynamic on this one it's almost like uh, I had to really push on the the handlebars when I was going around that corner to keep going around which is weird all right let's see if uh, I can get around all these cars here all right all right so this is a really nice bike this is floored right here. So, yep, got up to 60, second gear. Oh, yeah, this would be a great cool weather bike. I don't know about no wind when it's really hot. <laughs> I'm like sweating. I am burning up. This one you could literally take off your helmet because you'd have basically no wind you know a lot of guys like to ride without a helmet this would be the bike to ride I always wear a helmet because I've seen some people where the helmet saved them so I tend to always wear a full face helmet even though it's a completely different experience Usually if I'm wearing no helmet, I prefer to be like on a chopper going through the city really slow. <laughs> Not really on the highway. Uh, yeah, but this thing, this thing is more plush than a Road King, easily. More plush than uh, a Honda Goldwing. This is probably one of the most plush rides that I've ever been on. The seat is wonderful, wonderful. I could ride all day on the seat. Ergonomics are not bad, but I would see if I could change some things just being a tall rider. Uh, what else can I tell you about this bike? Uh, let's see. As far as gripping the fuel tank with my legs, looks like it's easy to do. Uh, one thing I do like about the floorboards is that I can put my feet 
uh, way back on the floorboards, like towards the back wheel. And uh, there's really nothing in the way. Uh, I've noticed on some bikes, uh, you can't really put your feet all the way back. And I like it because, you know, that way you can ch actually change the position of your feet. You know, so it's not so fatiguing being in the same position all the time. You kind of move around a little bit. And that's why I kind of like the highway bars and the, the pegs on the highway bars. To, where you can put your feet up on the pegs. So, kind of gives you a, a break from the same position all the time. Wow. Back brakes. <laughs> I guess they're not that bad if you really get on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I could lock up the back tire with those brakes. If I had to, I'd have to really get on them. Yeah, this thing's kind of a dog too, as far as power. I mean, it's fast. It's faster than probably 99% of the cars on the road. But compared to all the other bikes, it's pretty, it's pretty slow. But I don't know. It depends what you're after. You know, some of them are so fast. <laughs> like those electric bikes, they're they're too fast. Literally too fast. It's like zero to sixty in like 2.7 seconds or something. 2.9 seconds. Just crazy. I'm actually here in Golden, Colorado. And the uh, fourth week of July, the hottest week of the year. <laughs> uh, sweltering up here in the mountains. Beautiful scenery though. Yesterday we got pounded with rain and hail. It was kind of like dodging the rain all day and right at the end I got completely soaked. But today it looks like a really clear day. No problems at all with the weather. Except it's pretty hot. Uh, some of these bikes actually have the temperature on the, on the dash. I can't see the temperature. I see the time. I'm not sure if the time is right. I don't think that time is right. Mm. Don't really see the temperature. But that's one thing I would actually like to see on all motorcycles is uh, you know, the ambient temperature. And you can get an idea of, you know, what's the temperature out and what kind of gear do I need to ride this particular bike in this, you know, temperature. Like, like I can go home and I can ride, you know, without a windshield, without a fairing, on either my Dyna or my Fat Boy. And just by looking at the temperature, I know exactly what kind of gear that I should be wearing at that particular temperature. So, it'd be kind of nice to know. So this year I did notice they are staying on top of the fuel. <laughs> we got a full tank of gas. They're going through checking the gas and filling up all the bikes, which is nice. It seemed like last year I was kind of riding on fumes on a lot of the bikes, especially towards the end of the day. So one thing I always like to do is when I'm cruising down the road, just kind of pull in the clutch and you can see how much is road noise and how much is engine noise. There's quite a bit of engine noise, actually. It's super smooth on the road without that engine. It's amazing, actually. So quite a bit of, quite a bit of noise coming up from the engine, but it's still, I'd say even with that little bit of engine noise, it's still probably one of the smoothest rides ever with almost no engine vibration so not really a it's always interesting to see what's coming from the road though and what's coming from the bike so this one this one's pretty smooth yeah i don't know this could be my next bike <laughs> uh, uh i actually rode a um it was a, I think it was a 
I think it was a Road Glide CVO Limited last year, which was like this, except it was even more plush. It seemed like it was more plush than this. And I think they wanted like almost 60000 for that bike, which is crazy. So sometimes you find the right bike and it's not the right price. <laughs> I don't know. How many people can afford a $60,000 bike? But you know, like with your fat boy, it's only like $20,000, so it's not that bad. And 20,000, it seems like you find a lot of a lot of competing bikes in that price range of 20,000. So this is a pretty nice bike, I have to say. Probably one of my favorites right here. Uh, I think the Rogue Glides in general are one of my favorites. So a lot of it depends on, you know, the uh, the configuration. So, all right, let's see if I can get it in here in front of the boss. Sweet. All right, to turn it off, turn it off right there. Make sure you have the kickstand all the way down. <laughs> you don't want to drop that bad boy. It takes a lot of people to get it back up. But look at that bike. That is awesome. Absolutely love that bike. That is the Road Glide Limited 2023. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along, and I will see you next time.